think when I go very intrinsically to going within and why this particular song video has motivated to just do this project with you is that it fundamentally questions or um, not just even question, just point out the fact that we live in this world or in this curated world of a particular norm. So not all bodies or all identities or all way of being is not accepted. And there is only one particular norm that is centralized and accepted. Um, whereas there are so many bodies that exist in this world that is outside of this particular curated culture. Um, there's just more identities, you know, there's just more yeah. of ways of being. And what I loved the most about going to different sites and doing our videos is that there was so much color in that space. And yet we had so many eyes watching and seeing and judging yeah. yeah judging and putting shame but there were also eyes that were admiring. loving and admiring it you know so there were all kind of eyes that or audiences watching though it wasn't a performance yeah it wasn't a performance it was a very lived experience improv moment for myself and for you yeah and um Yet there were so many eyes that were making observations and some were making judgments. Mm. Some were positive and some were negative. And some people were making space for us. Yeah. You know, and were really kind that way. Some people were trying mm. to break it up mm. and make mm. fun of it. Yeah. Um, but all of it was, I think, part of the whole process the as whole well. The whole process, yep. Um, of developing it. So mm. what did we do today? Tell, tell. Yeah. So as we were going to different sites, we would... Uh, you know, we'll put the music on and then I'll just jam to it, improv to it and finding some sort of relatability or relation with the space, with the music, with the weather, with the light, with the sound, with the wind, um, you know, with the ground, not wearing any shoes on the streets of Melbourne. Like one, one white woman, she just asked me, Where's the, where are your shoes? I'm like, they're there. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I know. And I should have stepped in there and explained why the hell you weren't wearing shoes yeah, yeah. because of me. Um, no, no, but that whole idea of... See, it's a choice, right? Mm -hmm. It's a choice of mine to not to wear shoes. And why is that... I did make a request. Yeah, you made a request. And I made the choice of going by that request. Mm -hmm. So um, I, then my question is, why me not wearing shoes such a... Why is an inquiry by another body? Yeah. Yeah. You know, why because can't, it's not the norm. Yeah, it's not the norm. It's not the norm, right? And yeah. so when we see, un, you know, fundamentally when we are seen by people, we there is this expectation of how to be in a society. Yeah. And there's only this one way of being. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, it just does not work when not yeah. everyone is from the same world or the same. Like though we are in this, even if we're in a micro world, we're not the same. We are mm -hmm. so very different. And I guess the uglies is what is so beautiful. Yeah. The imperfection is so beautiful. You know, yeah. that there's so much of imperfection that should be celebrated. Yeah. And I guess even for myself, when being present in a very public space, I was very conscious of myself and I started to become very performative and very choreographed rather than being improv because, wait, I'm having eyes on me, so I need to dance properly. And now I was being part of a codified practice like Bharatanatyam, learning from a strict teacher and being told that you have to be perfect. And if you made one mistake, you are literally um, abused. Yeah. <laughs> that idea of perfection has been drilled from young, as, as young as a child. And now to switch that mind off and then to always check with you that is it okay? Was it okay? I know. But... I had to literally tell you a thousand times when mm. smash you. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Like yeah. the whole purpose of improvisation is just go with the flow, go with the moment, yeah. go with, you know. But be, isn't it mm. hard? Isn't it hard for us to even accept ourselves in something that we have been taught for so long yep. and just perform it like we're mm. breathing because mm. 
we know it. Like it's in us, yeah. but to actually do it in front of people who don't understand it for some reason, it's yeah. like going through a bunch of cobwebs. And you know, it, there's so much we need to break yeah. down yeah. around us before we become comfortable mm, mm, in that mm, space mm, mm, mm. to just be and do our dance. It's so crazy yeah. um, that we have to go through all that, but mm, that is mm, what we mm, do. Mm, mm. Um, and yeah, so today oh, I'm just gonna turn it's quickly. Today we did a video for the song called Uglies by um, Vibe of Jagannath um, and I will be sharing that piece but he did it, um, he did it in, in celebration of intersectionality um, which is something I guess me and um, you know, Sri Ram have experienced in our lives for such a long time being both Sri Lankan coming from um, you know, the effects of genocide, living through that, um, me being a female, and, and it's, it's been quite interesting ride to accept our beings in a Western country. Um, I won't go into the Eastern country because we didn't grow up there, we grew up in Australia. Um, I grew up in Perth and um, Sri Ram grew up in Melbourne. In Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, but we did a video today and it was exploring this idea of um, intersectionality to us and also exploring the idea of this ugly, this uglies. For me, um, I think the song was about, yeah, pointing out, um, pointing out the perception that society has on individuals um, who don't conform to societal norms, I suppose. I think that was it. And for me also, this was a bit of a social experiment because we literally went out there. Um, I love, love, love doing spontaneous, in the moment, um, improvisation pieces with artists because I really feel like Throwing artists in the deep end brings out the best in them. What do you think? <laughs> absolutely. No, no, no. Absolutely. Like, with improvisation, like, the practice for me is that how do I get out of my mind and into just the body? You know, how, like, that investigation of thinking through the body yeah. without the active brain. Yeah. You know? but judging yourself. Ju and judging. Yeah. Judging yourself. We're judging ourselves based on what other people are judging us yeah, by and yeah. when I throw you in a space which is like you know so alien to our practice mm, mm. how does that affect you in, you know yeah. it's not your comfort comfort zone where you know all the aunties and uncles mm. and, and children know what you're doing absolutely this and I guess like if we can also say like though um we don't have the contemporary sense of improvisation in our practice yeah we do have the concept of mano dharma Mm -hmm. But in South Asian diaspora community, um, or within the dance classes that happen, we're never taught Mano Dharma. Yeah, tell me more about Mano Dharma. The Mano Dharma, like, so usually Mano Dharma is typically done within mm. the Varnam. Mm. And, um, like, how do we take a, the idea of the Sahityam, of the Pallavi or the Anapallavi, and build up upon it yes. to bring about... And usually a sanchari, yeah, is, a sanchari. A sanchari is told to be a story. Mm. And what, because now, nowadays the Varnams take a very mythological yeah. uh, sensibility, mm. it's become a story time. Yeah. But when we see hereditary artists and uh, traditional choreographies of a Mohamana Varnam, mm. there's no story or mythological story done as a sanchari. Right. It's an improvisation of the dancer falling in love or lust or just proclaiming their desire for the Nayaka. Yeah. And just go building on upon that, how that the body in itself has so much desire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a Mohamana Yeah. So and even Padams. And Padams. With that, right? Absolutely. Pa Padams, I've heard Nirtya Pillai yeah, say that yeah. she gets on stage and just improvises. And just improvises. That's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. You know, in that moment. Absolutely. You dance. You literally Absolutely. dance at that Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Right? Like to the point where um, I actually don't rehearse. The only part of, of a Varnam that I rehearse is the Jatis and the Swarams. Mm. But when it comes to the um, Sahitim part of it, I never rehearse it. Beautiful. It's 
on that spot what I feel yeah. because you're reacting. Yeah. That's what mano dharma means. It's like what is your manas,、mm. your heart saying at that moment in relation to the song,、mm. in relation to the adrenaline that you're feeling in that space, in the、mm. performative space, in、mm. front of a front of eyes.、Mm. Because you need to be very well if you're very concerned on what that person is going to say,、yeah. you'll curate it in a way where it's sensible. Yes, exactly. Or If you don't care what other people are going to say、yeah. and just want to proclaim your own desire, yeah, yeah. So today、mm. was for me a two-way experiment. One was the dancer itself, I mean itself, <laughs> <laughs> to,、um, themselves,、um, you know, and how they are reacting to the moment and、um, the environment around them and the people around them. The other experiment was how it was. Society specifically in the city of Melbourne reacting to the、um, dancers, and we had some very interesting comments,、um, <laughs> 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 which I liked. There was there was mostly middle-aged Caucasian men. It was quite interesting. It was quite interesting, specifically that demographic, right? Yeah.、Um, it was just a repeat of that. Even majority of the eyes that、yeah. were passed by were, you know, let's be even specific, right?、Um, yeah. Cisgendered, <laughs> heteronormative, Caucasian men. Middle aged. Middle aged men. Middle aged. Middle aged. Because I feel like there's a lot more. I guess in the younger generation, there's a lot more acceptance,、mm. um, whereas in the past that hasn't been the case. Mm. Mm. Mm.、Um, and they were saying things like、um, Bollywood, oh, a bit of Bollywood, because that's all we do, right? Yeah, sure, all we know is Bollywood. That's、right? all we know is Bollywood, and then they themselves they had to share it as well, right? That knowledge that oh, we know something more than outside of our own knowledges, so they would. React do some research, and do,、mate. yeah. <laughs> well, you would think, right? But the thing is, I think this is where, like, the gap between the generational gap is. Now that we are in a generation where we are willing to be informed, at least our generation、mm. and the younger generation, they have so much of accessibility to so much of information through their phones. Yeah. So they in, they are being informed, whereas、mm. the elder generation, like these middle-aged、um, white men. No. What? Where are they getting the information from? And、yeah. then the willingness to even educate themselves. But then again, no one wants to be educated. No. Yeah. Because we all have confined education to a a physical building,、mm-hmm. and we're only being taught two plus two or A B C. That is what education is apparently. Yeah. But、right. really, is it when we are living in a very intangible society? Education should be an everyday thing that is happening every single day because we are coming in contact with so many people outside of our own bodies and our own outside of our own frameworks and, and experiences. Experiences, I think that's so、yeah. key, but that's not taught、mm. anywhere, anywhere. No, anywhere. Not even in our dance mm. classes mm. is mm. this taught. Yeah, and I think it should be. It should be taught. It should be like taught or actually. Informed. Informed.、Um, allowed for. Yeah. Expected. Allowed for the no the fact that your knowledge needs to be fluid. Yes. Yes. Fluid Why is it always so? Yeah. And that's that's again、um, with the whole real challenge. Ah,、oh, sorry guys.、Um, with the whole real challenge as well as、um, you know doing these experimental pieces, it's to kind of break those structures、mm. and. Rules. Obviously, we want to document what we're doing, so we will definitely, you know, talk about how this composition was and what we put together.、Um, but other than that, we are also trying to break away from this idea of you have to conform to certain structures and norms and all that sort of stuff, and only then can you embody this mm, dance. Mm, does that mm, make sense? Mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah, it does absolutely. Yeah, that, that's it for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tell tell me about the composition that you know we kind of we mixed a couple of yep. types yep. of things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm.、Um, so yeah, do you want to talk about the、um, music for starters? What did that involve? Yeah, find、um, the way that 
uh, Weber has composed, curated the song itself, it's there's just so much of intersectionality in it. Mm. Like you know, we ha- he ha- they have so many of um, beats that is originates from South India, in yeah. particular in in if we want yeah, yes. like if you want to be very specific with Tamil, Tamil influences, Nadi, yeah. and then the language is English. Yeah, but and yet kind of- there's Tamil in it interspersed, and the like the accent as well. The, you you can see that South Asian. Because South Asia, we have an English as well. Yeah, yeah. And we've got to accept that. Like, you know, yeah. there is an English that is outside of Australia, Australia or the Western or the West. countries. Yeah. Yes, correct. There is an English, right? 100%. 100%. Mm. Mm. So it's just this amalgamation of various aspects that come together. And I guess what... And this is very much part of my dance practice, dance and movement practice, is that um, there are so many techniques and vocab- movement vocabularies that exist within my body and now trying to find my not try not found my own practice and what happens is that all these movement vocabularies and dance vocabularies that just come together mm. and just merge and they just it's just my experience yeah so i've learned bharatanatyam karanas bharatanartyam mm. um nati shastra Sa- uh, sangeet ratnakara and i'm doing more research into all these other texts that mm. has exist- existed in previous centuries and now yoga and then kalari pait mm. um and, and odyssey you odyssey too. odyssey yeah. as well and yeah. then also um western techniques the laban yeah. technique martha graham's technique mm. being informed and now i guess my mission not even mission or like unconscious desire is is that now it's become conscious yeah. is that what is intrinsically mine yeah because i don't want to be a, a voice for a collective no we can't I we can't think we can i i 100 don't believe that we should we can be yeah. a voice for a collective no because already it's for an individual experience it's a, art is an individual experience absolutely like for example in, if we take bharatanatyam in context mm. whose voice am i going to be for bharatanatyam <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, because the bharatanatyam that we have today is highly appropriated oh oh yeah and and fused and fused yeah. so fused i don't even know where i was yeah. getting yeah so where concerned. and whom do i speak for yeah no and we can't we no. just can't And I, I think we should this conclusion mm. cannot talk yeah. to anyone about for yeah. anyone else sorry. Yeah. And I think we shouldn't. No. No, I don't think it's fair. Yeah. to judge that mm. way because it's and very personal. It's very personal and if we want the voices of others to be heard we should give them the opportunity to Yeah, you can provide yeah. yes that platform. Absolutely. Sure. See, if we want to like why do I have to be the voice of another can when I could provide the space because I have that privilege? Yeah. So why not use that privilege to create the space for them? Yeah. Why do I have to take the spotlight? Exactly. So true. Yeah. So true. So I think for myself like what my practice is is that it's based on my subjective lens of, yeah. of my perceptions because my perceptions and experiences are based because of this limited body. Yeah. And now what is my dance practice? My dance practice is of this body. Yeah. And yeah. I think this is what's so beautiful about this whole idea and of intersection. Mm. Because um being a a a child of two migrants in a in a country or in a land mm. that has been proclaimed to be something but really isn't but the land of the indigenous people. Yeah. So there's another layer added to that. Yeah. And I refuse to call myself Australian. Mm. And I refuse to call myself Sri Lankan as well. Yeah. So there's just all these definite intersections. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So much. Yeah. And also in terms of how you applied all of this to today, mm. um today's experiment. Mm. Tell me a little bit about that. Like um okay, so the music itself, I think it had uh element of R&B, mm. element of hip hop if mm. I may. Mm. Mm. Um element of uh cinema, mm. South Asian mm. Tamil yeah. cinema specifically. Yeah. Um, but also if we, let's could we also acknowledge the fact Karnatic. that like Karnatic but also the Tamil cinema it is influenced by folklore like oh, yeah. the folk yeah. beats that folk you beats, say folk beats the kutu beat yeah. which is yeah. which is i love the kutu beat mm, um mm. but yeah so how how did you feel dancing to this amalgamation mm, mm, of, mm. of I, i guess i end of the day i find i have to remind myself all these influences are uh codified practices yeah and as much as 
these codified um, movements or vocabularies or technique of music and song and sound, though they exist, they're inherently human though. Yes, of it's, course. It's, it's, At the end of the day, the of the day it's, right? it's human movement. Yeah. And, and, it's, sound and, and all these sounds and music and movement has come from a human body. Yeah. And then they've gone Correct. to the fact uh, like that next step of codifying it mm. and I guess that's what I try to remind myself and I guess to coming back to the fact that when taking the shoes off mm. and the socks off yeah. and <laughs> reminding myself that we are first of all the primary identity okay, is on, we are human yeah. so everything has stemmed from the human existence yeah it's yeah. not from an outer another realm yeah it's very much from the body mm. the human body yeah and I think I just remind myself of that. And like, you know what? All these codifications really don't matter at the end of the day. No. Well, they well, to do. Say that they do. They do matter, I feel. Yeah. But I also feel that we can learn from mm, them. Mm. After we've given them yeah. respect, yeah. we we can, mm, you know, take mm. from them and build on it and mix yeah. it. Because that's our expression at mm, the end of mm, the day, you know? Mm, mm. Being hybrid breeds. Yeah. That is just a natural expression yeah. and to suppress that mm, mm, is mm. suppressing a part of who yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. Um, I cannot say that I'm not westernized mm, because I mm. totally am. At yeah. the same time, I cannot say I mm. don't have Eastern influence. I totally do. Mm. So then how do I just exist as one or the other when yeah. I'm neither mm. and both? Mm, 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 mm. Do you know what I mean? No, absolutely. Like, so, yeah, it's, you can't it's be of... one or another when we are and like, and we do live in a world or in a time where we are globalized now. Exactly, exactly. So um, today you used elements, I'm guessing, um, with, we had Bharatanatyam. Mm -hmm. You danced to more of a kuttu beat. Yep. And um, we definitely would have had that influence in the movement. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you also used Bharatanatyam. Was there anything else that, you know? I did you, have some Kalari Paita in it. Okay, yeah. Kalari Paita. Mm -hmm. And did you, we also had a touch of Odyssey somewhere there. And there was some I, I touch of Odyssey as well. Yeah. <laughs> So those are the elements, or sorry, practices, or what do you want to call them? Um, <laughs> practices, <laughs> the sound practices yes. that we utilize to make this piece. So far, um, there's still another section of the experiment to go next week. So I'm looking forward to doing yeah. that. Yeah. Oh wow! Thank you so That's much. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, that was fun. Um, it was a lot of fun. And it was also triggering, <laughs> and it was good Very, to. Kind of I think it's a. Uh, I want to channelize that trigger in a positive sense so yeah. that it reminds me of what the reason reminds me of what i'm doing and why i'm doing it yeah because yeah. i think like we were getting a bit tired of like you know going to different places and doing stuff and then it's funny when these people started judging us and what we were doing and calling out names and whatnot um you know just doing funny things and imitating us and stuff mm. Uh, especially Sri Ram, who I think is very brave to have continued to dance, although this was happening. Um, uh, that shows strength in your art and, and you know conviction in what you do, which mm -hmm. is admirable. So thank you. Thank you. Um, it's um, what was I saying <laughs> just before <laughs> that? I forgot. I forgot what I was saying. Yeah. So um, what? Yeah. So although these people were saying and doing all of this stuff, we. I think that actually inspired us further. The trigger inspired mm. us mm. further to go, I want to do this video because this is what this whole video is mm. about. Mm. Fighting for our own expression, fighting for um, to just be this intersectionalized hybrid breed that we are and not be judged for it. Mm. Or, I feel like it is. Mm. It, it's some form of freedom of expression. I th that's what mm. it was for me. Um, yeah, I think definitely. Fighting for freedom of expression. Yeah. yeah. And just being different. Yeah. And I think, I, I, I think I'll go that extra space or like to even just really say it like, have a, like to claim our own agency and autonomy. Yes, you know? yes, 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 yes. Um, yes. And I, think that's, I yeah. think that's what we were like, that's what really made us yeah. want to do better. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, and because of our own autonomy and agency, yeah. To be, it stems from desire, mm. and our root being stems from desire. Like we have this desire, and the desire is to be ourselves. Yeah, you know, uh, an unapologetic, unapologetically ourselves. Selves, that's yeah. that's that's mm. it. Mm. I think that was just 
Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Absolutely. That was liberating. It, it's very liberating. Like, it was I really have, liberating like, to dance today yeah. in Melbourne, being judged by everybody. <laughs> like, um, I, like, you know, being liberated, like, um, I guess, like, we shouldn't have to say, or well, myself as well, like, bef- after, like, at the end of doing a sequence, like, not having to check, like, do I a know. checkup. It's hard. You know, it's very hard when... Because end of the day, we are doing it to an audience that mm. is the phone, who mm. are going to perceive our Ex- art yeah, expression yeah. through the phone. So how do we, that thought... It's always there. It's always, it's there. always there. But how do we take that thought out and just be ourselves? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do we really, truly be liberated is another quest and maybe another work or a project that For we can... Sure. For sure. Explore. Well... Definitely through my research, I'm doing. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Amazing, high five. Good work. Thanks so much. Thank you. And more soon. <laughs> <laughs>